You know, I probably should have started talking before I turned the engine on. It's whatever. Anyways, I fucked up. So I was on my way home the other day during the snowstorm, and I noticed a parking lot that didn't look like it had been touched. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's go have a little bit of fun. Long story short, I ran into a curb, and now my steering rack is kind of fucked. I don't know how fucked, but that's what we're going to go find out today. So yeah, we're going over to Gabe's house. I want to install the PMC short shifter, and we're going to kind of assess the damage on the steering rack. I'm scared it's going to be bad. Like, I don't think it's going to be that bad, but I think it might be bad. I just contradicted myself. That's okay. We're just gonna go. So after I hit this curb, right, I got into the car and the hard line like on the bottom of the steering rack is like completely smushed in. And on top of that, my steering wheel is not centered now. And when I got underneath the hood to look at my steering column, the little like flex joint looking thing, that thing's pretty bent. And now the steering wheel binds up in some spots. All right, so here's what we're working with. It looks like I smushed this bottom line like nearly completely. I mean, I haven't lost power steering yet, so it's probably not too bad right now. But along with that, we also have that bent steering column. To try and fix this, since I don't really wanna buy a, a new steering column right yet, I'm gonna try and loosen up this little clamp right here, and then I'm gonna try and slide this down that way that this has more length and can like straighten back out. I'm still kind of confused how the steering column even got bent because from a quick look underneath the car, nothing really is bent out of place or anything like that. Like none of the mounting brackets for the uh, steering rack are out of place. The front subframe, none of those mounts are even warped or moved like at all. So yeah, I'm gonna try to use this stuff as a temporary fix just until I can find the parts that I wanna use for this car. I originally wanted to go with a Z3 rack on this car because I hear those have a quicker ratio and they have a linear steering ratio, uh, whereas these cars are a progressive ratio, which, which means towards the center of the steering rack, it turns a bit slower, but as you get to the edge, it starts to turn faster, whereas with the Z3, it's the same all the way across, hence it's linear. I'm gonna try and get that steering column straightened out, and then we'll go from there. Steering column is straight once again, or straightish, rather. Um, pretty much all I did is I loosened up that little collar that I pointed out before, and then I essentially just got up here and got like the bend over the top, and then I got in there with an extension and I just started smacking the extension with a mallet and it straightened it out. Not perfect by any means. Uh, there's still a little bit of binding in the steering wheel, but overall this is just like a, a temporary fix. I'm still probably gonna get a new steering column. Still gonna get a new rack, just not at this moment. This is a good fix for me to at least be able to like drive the car. Probably not take it to the track, but at least take it out when I feel like it. Now that we have that done though, we can get to installing the short shifter. Look at this little drift RC car that Gabe got. This thing's so cool. This is hot boy shit right now. It even comes with little cones and extra wheels. <laughs> it's got drift spares, bro. All right, from what I understand, this should be a fairly straightforward process. But knowing me, nothing's ever really straightforward. First thing I'm going to do is get the shift boot off, though. I'm probably not going to go too depth in with this installation because there's so many other videos. Uh, I'll probably link a good video for the installation process down below if you guys want to go look at that. But if you want to see me bullshit around with this, then... You're welcome to stay. <laughs> okay, so once we get those two things off, we get access to this little rubber mount down here. And from what I understand, you can just take this bitty out. Ugh. Ooh, there we go. Oh, that's dirty as shit. Oh, everything is so dirty now. Hey, look at that. So now that we got the boot, that little rubber piece and this rubber piece off, we have access all the way down below. All right, now that we got that out of the way, we gotta get underneath the car. <laughs> oh, this man spray painting his wheels. <laughs> Damn. Look at that sparkle. God damn, that actually looks kinda cool though, not gonna lie. That's what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so from what I understand, since the short shifter has only one mounting point, we're gonna be able to take out this top rod because essentially all this top rod is doing right now is giving the stock shifter a little bit more support. So the new short shifter is only gonna be mounting up to this, this lower bar right here. And it looks like to disconnect that top bar, we just need to flip up that little 
tab right up, ooh, right up there. That little boy, that little dirt boy out there. All right, sick. Now that we got this little flap up, we should be able to just, yep, pull out this little pin. And now this is free. Now we just need to disconnect it from back there. And then we'll disconnect this lower rod from the stock shifter. And then we should be able to just pull the entire assembly out the bottom. Now, I think if I get this out of the way over here, we should be able to just... Oh, hey, look at that. Just like that, old shifter is out. Look at this crusty thing. Dirty boy. Look at this man go. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this thing actually ripped though? <laughs> yeah, I gave it like a 30 minute charge. It said, uh, recommend it four hour charge. I said, I ain't waited. <laughs> now don't drive that on the hardwood or, or Ann's gonna get mad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Ann. Don't hate me. <laughs> you know, I. I Ended up getting the 440 mil option. I thought it was gonna be like obnoxiously tall, but I'd say this is probably like about perfect, to be honest. I'm glad I didn't go with this compared to the shorter version. But you can kind of see the way this is gonna mount up. This bottom plate is gonna sandwich up underneath, and then this is gonna sit on top, and then there's just a bunch of little Allen bolts that go through these holes to sandwich it in the little hole down here. This is so exciting. All right, so Gabe's gonna be up here and I'm gonna go under underneath the car and I'm gonna sandwich this plate underneath and then we're gonna get a bolt in or two. Bruh. Oh, shit. Um, you think I should reuse these little... This will be a good idea. Alright, cool. So I got the selector rod all connected underneath, and I also got the clip in. So now all that's left to do is get the rest of these bolts in. I'm debating whether or not I want to keep this open. Like, I kind of want to keep the stock with the boot. But also my boot just looks like shit as it is already. I don't know, maybe I'll get a new boot. I would just get fabric and just make your own. Low-key, that might be the move. Dang, even this has a fucking part number. Right? <laughs> I wonder how much those pieces go for. I wonder like, how much they went for in, like, whenever this car first came out. It's still crazy to me to think that this was, like, some luxury car back in the day that was, like, sought after by wealthier people, I guess. And now it's in the hands of us. who just <laughs> fucking thrash on them and crash them into curbs and not care about it. <laughs> the life of a BMW. I bet it'll come full circle full, uh, soon enough though. Give it like 10 years and then all the rich people are gonna be looking for these cars because everyone drifted the fuck out of them and they're gonna be rare as shit. All right, I think that's... Ooh. Try it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that sounds so cool, dude. <laughs> I knew it was gonna make a difference, but like... That's so short. Test drive. Yeah, this thing's for a test drive. <laughs> and it's so close to the steering wheel, bro. Oh, I love it. You coming with? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Squeaky boy. I was gonna try and put these back in to kind of make this look a little bit cleaner keep it looking like a little OEM but I think with how 
messed up this boot is like i'm just gonna wait until i either make a new boot or i just get a brand new one but overall i'm super happy with this short shifter price point it's amazing i think i only picked up this pmc short shifter for like 130 bucks so like this mixed with the transmission mounts mixed with the engine mounts it has made a world of a difference for this car. I'm kind of sad that the rack's all fucked up now though, because I don't know if I'd, I, I don't even know if I'd be able to drive it like this on track because there still is, like I was saying, like a little bit of binding, but I think I might end up upgrading to a solid like steering column because I know with these ones, they have like that little rubber coupler at the bottom and apparently they wear out pretty bad. And I was looking at mine, it's, it's a little dry rotted, nothing like too crazy, but from what I've heard, the solid steering columns make a world of a difference in like steering feel, steering response. So yeah, that might be one of the next things I do along with getting a new rack if that's needed. But I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed. I hope y'all have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.